Hi folks, um, in this test today we are going to answer the question how much power does my coffee machine actually draw from my batteries? So we've set this um, rig up here to do the testing, I'll take you through it. So here we have our lithium ion phosphate battery bank. It's meant to be 300 amp hours but actually we've discovered during testing that it's only 285 so we're going to call it a 280 amp hour battery bank. I, I put a few sensors to measure temperature just out of interest this is a separate project I'm doing so I've got a, a sensor here on the positive terminal which is the one that gets the warmest uh, also one on the negative terminal and then over here I've got another uh, sensor on one of the, the live cables so I can see uh, what temperature that gets to just out of interest so we go from the battery uh, obviously the positive goes straight to our inverter we've got a two kilowatt uh, Giandel or Giandel inverter however you pronounce it uh, surging to four kilowatts so that should be plenty for us to measure the actual current uh, I'm running two shunts I'm doing that just because I'm actually comparing these two shunts I, I could have done it all with one so here is an inexpensive shunt with an external display uh, it's actually a really nice rig. They cost less than 30 pounds, dollars or euros. Uh, so very inexpensive and so far very effective. Uh, some people have complained that they don't last that long. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Here I have my uh, Victron shunt and this is a far more expensive bit of kit and I use my uh, application. So let's see, get to the Victron shunt and this is telling us uh, that we currently have no power being drawn so that's fine that's cool so <clears throat> we have the inverter here and uh, plugged into it we have this uh, Nespresso coffee machine this is a standard coffee machine I'll tip it over some stage and see what its rating is but I think it's about 1.2 kilowatts um, so coffee machine and the two cups ready to go right so let's uh, begin the test uh, we'll uh, turn the inverter on first which uh, will come into standby mode and uh, as we can see it's uh, drawing uh, about 0 0.8 0 0.9 amps just to stay on so just less than one amp standby at this stage uh, later on this would uh, use less power when it goes to sleep but for now let's just say that it, occupies, it uses up nearly one amp just to stay on right and uh, well, let's turn on the coffee machine wait for that to reach the heat you can hear the fan is kicked on on the inverter straight away and we have gone to 12 or 13 amps that it's drawing that's not much yet I'm very surprised sorry not it's actually sorry it's about a hundred amps not I was reading the voltage upside down so that's roughly 100 amps as it comes on and goes off. Interesting that it doesn't just stay on, it keeps on coming on and off. Lesson number one, don't read upside down. The light is still flashing on the coffee machine, so it's not ready yet, it's still heating up. I'll be curious to see how many amp hours it has taken just to heat up when it gets there. Right, the light has stopped flashing. Interestingly, it has used um, 0.74 of an amp hour just to heat up. That's not bad at all. Uh, that's it, it's ready now. So let's, <coughs> let's start the first cup of coffee. We're gonna make two cups of coffee in this test. So let's uh, start the process. Straight away the uh, amps go up again to just over 100. It seems to be staying on 104 amps at this stage, 105 amps. And that's about, now this is obviously subjective as to how much you're gonna pump in, but uh, I think for us, this is our first cup. So the first cup, has taken uh, 1.4 it's taken it to 1.4 1.5 
about 1.5 amp hour is what we have used so far to make the first cup of coffee. So let us get ready for the second cup. We are on uh, about 1.6 amp hours, uh, 1.6 amp hours and uh, the coffee machine is still hot. So when we started this, the coffee machine was completely cold. Uh, let's run the second cup now. It seems to be staying on about 105 amps for now. It seems to go on and off all the time. And it's off a bit and back on again. And that's about enough water. Again, this is very subjective. Uh, somebody may want more or less uh, water passing through. So now <clears throat> we can safely say that to make two cups of coffee, the actual coffee, from when you uh, switch everything on to when you are ready to drink the first cup is 2.35. Let's see what this says. Yeah, 2.3 amp hours, 2.35 amp hours is what it takes to make two cups of coffee. Now that's the coffee, so now we're gonna to prepare to see what it would take to heat the milk cup. Right, so we've uh, made the two cups of coffee, Nespresso, on a uh, 1.26 kilowatt Nespresso machine. Uh, the next thing we're gonna test is to see uh, just how much power we would use to heat up a little bit of milk. Uh, so we're going to heat the milk up, froth it and uh, complete the cup of coffee. And that would give us a coffee that is uh, an espresso made with, um, in this case, uh, oat milk that we will heat up and then froth and uh, drink it like a cappuccino, I guess. Uh, and that's how I prefer my coffee. So that's what I want to see in this test. Again, the amount of milk will be quite subjective, but that's fine. It'll just be an average amount that somebody would put into a drink. So we are on 0.8 amps at the moment. And uh, the reading is 2.661 uh, amp hours. So we're going to plug this in. So that's our induction plate. It's a bit overkill, double plate here. Uh, but uh, we are still on 0.9 amps, so not too bad. And we have our pot of milk over here. So I am going to see if I can get this right upside down. So we go power on and then power. So we're on uh, one kilowatt. Let's take it to, oh, it's a one kilowatt plate. This one's induction plate, so that's fine. Uh, we have gone to 80 amps continuous draw, which is uh, pretty much what we'd expect on one kilowatt. Um, my connections must be really good here because these have not changed temperature. I know they've been on for a very short time, but they have not changed temperature. Uh, what I've found practically is that anything around about 100 amps or below uh, does nothing. As soon as you go to about 150 amps plus, uh, which is where you'd be drawing a full two kilowatts, uh, that then changes everything and these get quite warm. Even this thick cable gets surprisingly warm. So the, uh, the milk, as you can see, if you little bubbles there, again, this is subjective. I might just get a temperature probe just to see what it's doing. <clears throat> Let's see with a temperature probe. Not actually, whoops, it's not going up for some reason. This must be on hold, it must be locked. Yeah, it was on hold. Some other hold button had been pressed, so let's see. This has gone up to 70, 88, 90 degrees. Yeah, didn't want it any hotter than that, 90, about 93, 95. So the milk is done. And what have we used? It's gone to 4.90, so we started at 3.6. We've got to 4.9, so it's actually pretty efficient 
this is quite surprising. It's really efficient to use an induction plate to heat up your, uh, your milk. Surprising. Right. Okay, this is not part of the official test, but this is so that it uh, tastes really good. It's, it's really nice and steamy. This is just the right temperature. Let's get it going in there. And oh, that got hot. Right. Milk is nicely frothed and it's making a mess everywhere. And let's see, one coffee. Excuse my lack of latte art. And let's see how this coffee tastes. Wow, espresso is always good. This is the kind of coffee you want to drink when you're on the road. It's just the right temperature and it tastes absolutely delicious. Right, so uh, this finishes the test of uh, running the Nespresso machine and the uh, induction plate to heat the milk up. And so if we look at the, uh, the cheap uh, Jantec shunt, it is uh, 5 amp hours that we have used of our battery. And if we look at the Victron shunt, 4.9 hours, so they are very close. So that's it. Uh, when we started this test, uh, these were both on zero. Uh, so we started up, there's a bit of standby, uh, and uh, actually the standby consumption increase uh, continues. So we've, we're down to 5.012 amp hours now. That's fine, uh, that's to be expected. So five amp hours to make two cups of coffee really delicious coffee and uh, our battery is down from 100 percent to 99 percent so in this particular case we used roughly one percent of the battery capacity it's actually close to two percent but anyway we'll say it's one percent <laughs>